Hey y'all, welcome back to Apron Strings. I'm gonna uh, be making, I'm gonna take a roast and make stew meat out of it. Now, y'all can pay the extra price at the market for them to cut it up, or you can just buy you a chuck roast when they're on sale and make your own stew meat. Now, Troy said what sounded good to him, and I told y'all he hadn't been eating much lately, was the meat like we make soup with stew meat, but he don't want all the vegetables in it. So I'm going to finish cutting this roast up and show y'all what I'm doing. And I'm going to put it in the pot. I'm going to boil it for about, bring it to a boil for about 10 minutes, maybe 15. Then I'm going to drain that juice off. Then I'm going to add some more water and boil it and season it until it's tender like I would if I was adding all my vegetables in. What that does, it gets rid of that old strong blood, strong flavor that sometimes it has. There's a Chinese place in Humble called Jade Palace. And on Wednesdays, they would have the most delicious soup. And they told my son-in-law, he was good friends with the owner, that that's what they do. They bring it to a boil and they drain that juice off. And then they go ahead and finish cooking the meat and seasoning it all. So that's what I'm fixing to do to start with. I'm going to finish cutting it up and get it in the pot, bring it to a boil. I'll show y'all what I'm doing. I'm going to drain it. Then I'm going to put liquid back on it and I'm going to season it with onion and garlic and beef bouillon and the stuff that I put in the vegetable soup, but he won't have the stuff in the vegetable soup. Now he said he might like a potato or two cut up in it. We'll see. But I will season the broth where, because he said to drink the broth, it'll be kind of like bone broth, but not made with any bones. So we'll see how he likes it and if it's what he wants. And if it isn't, then I'm going to go ahead and just add all my vegetables to that water and make a big old pot of vegetable soup. But we'll see what's going on. But I thought I would bring y'all along. I'm going to finish cutting this up. And all I'm doing is just cutting it in pieces. And I'm leaving the fat on it so it'll flavor the, the juice. So I'm just cutting it in like one inch strips and then in squares. Some of it's a little bigger than others, but... That's just how I'm doing it. I had this one, this little roast in the freezer, and uh, so I didn't have to use one of my great old big ones. This is a pretty good bit of stew meat, but if I go ahead and make soup out of it, then it'll, it won't be a whole lot. Okay, I've got it cut, and I'm just going to get it in my stove cast iron, enameled cast iron here, and I'm going to cover it with water and bring it to a boil, let it boil for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to drain that, and then I will uh, put some fresh water on it. So I'm going to put it over here, and just with the pot filler, we'll kind of cover it a little bit. Get down in there. Okay, I've just barely got it covered. So I'm going to cut it on high till it starts boiling, and then I'll cut it down a little bit, boil it for 10 minutes, and then we'll uh, drain it and get started on seasoning. Okay, see I've just barely got it kind of covered in water to bring it to a boil and let it boil for a minute and then, um, well for 10 minutes, and then drain it. And then I'll season it up real good, make a good broth on it, and he'll have boil stew meat and broth to eat. And I may end up using some of it for a pot of soup. Okay, I've actually only brought it up to a boil and boiled it for about five minutes. And see how nasty and dark that is? I'm going to uh, drain that over a bowl over there at the sink. And then I'm going to put fresh water on it and cook it and season it and cook it till it's tender. Okay, let me get it from the stove. Because it's hot and it's heavy. Just going to pour it in that bowl for the colander. And I'm not rinsing the meat, so some of that will still be on it, but not, not the full amount like that. Drink some of my meat in there. Okay, I'm just going to let that cool right there because it's going to have to go back. Uh, it's going to have to go outside for the animals. I'm just going to go ahead over here and put some fresh water on this. I 
I'm going to put some um, onion soup mix in it and I'm going to put some better than bouillon beef in it and onion and garlic powder and whatever else I decide I'll tell you just to flavor the juice real good where he'll have good broth and tender beef to eat. So I'm going to get it back on the stove and cook it down and I'll let y'all watch me season it because it's just going to be winging it to give you an idea of what to do. Now if you were going to make homemade soup you would cook this until your meat is tender and then add in your potatoes and carrots and celery and onion and garlic English peas, corn, green beans, whatever you want to put in your vegetable soup. It's good if you just put potatoes in here, just have meat and potatoes. But uh, you cook your beef down till it's tender and then you make your soup in the broth and along with the meat. So I'm going to get this back over there on the stove and get it to simmering. Now to start with, I'm going to put it on high, and then when it comes to a good boil, I'll go ahead and cut it down, put the lid on it, let it simmer and get tender. But right now, I'm going to add onion powder. I'll try to guesstimate. Mm, a couple of tablespoons at least of onion powder, and I may add more when I taste of it later. Probably a good teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. And I'm not going to salt it yet. <coughs> not going to salt it yet because some of the seasoning may have salt in it. I am going to put some of this coarse ground black pepper. That was about a half of a teaspoon. And I can't taste the dish yet because the meat's still raw. But I'll get the broth seasoned some and get it cooking and then I can add everything else. I am going to add um, some onion soup mix to let it, the meat cook and absorb some of the flavor. I buy this, I told y'all, at Aldi for I think it's 58 cents. Um, and then I'll just keep it in my airtight containers here and pull it out when I want to. But you get two packages for 50 something cents at Aldi. So I keep my pantry stocked with it for seasoning my meatloafs or whatever. So that'll help flavor the broth. Okay, I'm just going to let that come back up to a boil and let it just simmer till my meat gets tender. And that's going to take probably a good hour. And then I'll come back and show you what else we're going to do. Okay, I got my better than uh, bouillon beef out. And if I can get it open, I'm going to put me a spoon of that in there. That's probably a couple of tablespoons to flavor the broth. And then later, if the broth is too strong, of course, I'll dilute it some. But I'll have a good base if he don't eat it all, make a pot of soup. Well, I know he won't eat it all because he don't eat enough to keep a bird alive anymore. But that's looking like some good rich beef broth, and that's what I want it to taste like for him. So I'll get this back in the ice box and just let that simmer down, and I'll bring y'all back and let you know what's going on here in a little bit. Okay, I've already started quartering some little potatoes. I just scrubbed them real good, and I'm just going to quarter them and drop them over. He said he would eat some potatoes. He don't want carrots and all of that in there. So the meat is pretty tender. But I'm going to uh, add these potatoes to the broth and let them cook. And I hope he likes it and he just eats like a little pig because he certainly has not been eating much lately. These are small Yukon Gold potatoes. I really prefer the red potatoes, but I don't always have them. i tell you what I do. Kroger, they have a markdown bin over there, and whatever's in the little bags is 99 cents. So I got this whole bag of potatoes for 99 cents. 
Let me get the lid off of it. So I can drop these down in there. Where is my... I think I'm going to use this. Because as sure as I drop them, they're going to splash back up on me. And I don't want to be burned. That'll work, won't it? Just ease them down in there. It's going to be kind of like hash, isn't it? Just meat and potatoes. I, I wanted to put some onion in it, but I didn't know. Sometimes he don't... I love the Vidalia because it's sweet, and he don't like the sweet onion, so... Let me get y'all over here to see what it looks like, and I'm going to cook it till these potatoes get done, and then we'll dish a little bit up and taste it. Okay, it's just barely simmering along because I've got it on simmer. But see the big old hunks of meat, and they're getting tender. I can kind of tear them apart with my wooden spoon. So I'm going to taste of the broth and see what I need to add to it. Probably a little bit more onion powder and a little salt and this and that. But I'll get it seasoned up, and then we'll dish some of it up here in a little bit and taste of it. Okay, guys, you can see that it's still simmering, but the potatoes are very tender. You can just cut them with your fork and the meat is fall apart tender. So this should be what Troy was wanting. Just stew meat with potatoes and the sauce is delicious. I'm going to dip up just a little bit, bring it over there and, and taste of it. Okay y'all, what started out as just a chuck roast ended up into a wonderful uh, well, pot of stew, I guess you could call it, because it has all the seasonings, it has the meat and uh, potatoes in it. Now I'm going to taste of it. I've already tasted of the broth, and it was good. Mm. The potatoes, I could just mash with my spoon and cut them in half. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you all this meat, how tender it is. Let me see if I can get it. I can just mash it. See how it's just in pieces? Very tender. I uh, actually got it boiling. Boiled it five minutes and drained that off. Put fresh water on it. I put onion powder, garlic powder, salt, black pepper, onion soup mix, and better than bouillon beef in it. And tasted it till I got it like I wanted it to taste. Then I brought that back up to a boil and I cut it down to a simmer for, uh, it's probably been simmering for an hour, 45 minutes to two hours, till the meat was real tender. When my meat started getting tender, then I quartered my potatoes and put them in there and let it continue. I cut it up a little bit where the potatoes would cook. But I'm gonna tell y'all something, this is good. Mm-hmm. That was a big bite of meat. Very, very good. And every time I eat meat on here, I think, oh no, when I smile, I'm going to have a mouthful of uh, roast in my teeth. But anyway, if you buy stew meat at the store, they just cut it up just like this and make stew meat. And it's usually more than what a roast is on sale per pound. So this is a way for y'all to make some good soup or stew out of roast beef. Make your own stew meat. Serve your family something good and hearty. Now, for me... I would have added some green beans and some um, butter peas, those little lima bean looking in the frozen food section, they call them butter peas, or little butter beans. I would have had corn and tomatoes, and I'd had a little bit of carrots, and maybe a little shredded cabbage. I put everything in my vegetable soup. Of course, onions and garlic. But Troy don't like all of that. He doesn't like the, he said the carrots make it too sweet, and Vidalia onions are too sweet for him. Maybe I'm not sweet as he is, and I need some extra sweetness. I don't know. But anyhow, um, the stew is good, and I hope that, that he likes it. If he don't do anything but drink the broth off of it, I hope that he will enjoy it. He's getting around pretty good. When he don't try to do anything, he can sit down and breathe. But when he tries to do something, he don't have enough air. But we're just, we're just living each day we got and enjoying it, and he's doing what he feels like doing. And if he don't feel like doing anything, hey, he's retired. He don't have to. So the good Lord bless and keep y'all. I hope y'all have enjoyed this video. It's another little something I do once in a while. That My mama did this. My mama would cut up a roast. It was cheap back then. And mama would buy this roast. 
and it had little bitty rectangle bones all the way around it. I don't know what kind of rose. It was cheap. It had to be cheap because Mama bought it. We was poor. And it would make the best roast. Or she'd cut those little bones off and she would uh, make stew meat out of it and make homemade soup. So I've been having this for many, many years because, you know, I am 39. And counting and counting and counting and counting and counting. Anyhow, y'all uh, stay safe. Please be getting you a little bit of extra stuff. Everything I read in here says we're in for shortages and and uh, shipping lines will be down and we're not going to be able to get the stuff that we're used to getting. And if you'll just be wise, and instead of going out and buying a hamburger and french fries for the family, cook something at home that costs less money and take that extra and stock you some extra beans and rice or oatmeal or pasta and pasta sauce. Things that will fill your stomach and go a long ways, but they don't cost a fortune. You have no excuse for not putting something in your pantry when you've been told over and over and over, buy one thing at a time, and before long it'll be stopped. Don't go knocking on your neighbor's house wanting to borrow what they've had sense enough to go buy ahead of time because you didn't do it yourself. Uh, stock your pantry and be prepared for a hurricane, an earthquake, uh, a flood, a famine, whatever may be coming. We don't know, but we do know we're going to be hungry. So get your pantry stocked. You know, Mom always told me God helps them that helps their self. Don't expect everybody to be handing out to you when you haven't put forth the effort to take care of yourself. That's just a wise word to people I don't know and people I do know. If somebody's stocking for their family, their pantry for their family, they're not stocking it for your family. You need to stock your own. I don't care if it's mama. I don't care if it's your aunt, if it's your brother or your sister. They don't need the added burden of somebody else when you've had a warning and you could be getting stuffed in. It's not just, I've listened to some people that call themselves preppers. I'm not a prepper. I'm just a wise housewife that keeps my pantry stocked all the time. And when I know that they say, hey, there's been a, too much rain, there hadn't been enough rain, there's going to be a shortage of yada, yada, yada. I try to buy a little bit of it ahead because the price is going to skyrocket. So, but even the ones that are preppers are saying the shortages are coming. We're using last year's corn now and there's not any this year. So what do you think that's going to do to the corn prices? Get you some corn meal. Get you some popcorn. Uh, get you some things that you're going to need that's made out of corn. It's going to be expensive. And just like that, smack dab in the middle of me talking about corn, my camera cut off because my card was full of pictures. Anyway, I think y'all got the message. Get you some stuff in your pantry that you're going to want in case hard times hit. I'm going to get over here and get this video uploaded where y'all can watch it. Watch for a sale in your area and get you a roast to make you some stew meat. You know, you could cook it down like that and then... Uh, make you a roux and thicken that juice like brown gravy and oh my goodness it's good on noodles or rice there's always a lot of different ways to use one thing um yeah it's kind of like beef tips cooked a little bit different but it'd be like beef tips and rice so there's a lot of things you can do with a cut of meat besides just the standard thing that everybody does all the time y'all come back here in a day or two and we'll do something else that's really good and I'm going to show y'all my new musical instrument shortly. And then I'm going to do my haul from the LDS storehouse. Or I've got to look up what they call their self. But anyhow, I've got a couple of good ones coming up maybe by the end of the week. First of next week. That y'all have some good stuff to look forward to. Don't forget to hit that little bell so you'll be notified. And um, give me a thumbs up if you like anything on the video. And share it with your friends. And please help my channel reach 10,000. I'm well on my way and I'm so excited. I thank the good Lord. Every time I click that computer on and there's some more subscribers, I say, oh, thank you, Jesus, for every one of them. I want you to bless them. So see, I'm praying for y'all too. While you're blessing me, I'm asking God to bless you. See y'all again soon.